This video is gonna get a little bit trippy because I wanna talk about Neville Goddard literally slipping into a parallel reality and seeing a dead man. <laughs> uh, I was listening to one of uh, Neville's lectures and he was talking about parallel realities. If you are not familiar with Neville Goddard's uh, later life, in which he was all about the promise and not much more about the law because he felt like he communicated everything about the law. The law is the law of assumption. Well, what is the promise? The promise is the promise of God to be awakened within man. That is our uh, infinite hunger. That's the terminal of a soul's development where they become one with God. Now, this is not a religious uh, topic, so please uh, this channel is not about religion anyways um, uh, here we talk about spirituality and how to maximize your uh, to, uh, to align with your higher self and you know get what you want in this life to have fun with uh, ourselves so Neville Goddard talked about the promise in later part of his life and the promise is basically the promise of God to man that one day he will awaken within man and man will be united with God and will be lifted out of this world of suffering and Neville Goddard was talking about in one of his lectures where he saw a vision of uh, previously uh, he was talking about a man who never believed in Neville Goddard's teachings like really rejected his, his teachings and this man died and Neville Goddard saw him in a vision uh, Neville Goddard slipped into another parallel, parallel reality where he saw this man about 20 something age and perfectly well and Neville talked to him that you died <laughs> and this man said are you like I'm paraphrasing but this man said like are you stupid or something how am I dead when I'm alive here look at me I'm alive but Neville Goddard said uh, I uh, attended your funeral you died and uh, this man of course if somebody tells me right now in front of me that you are dead and that you died i would be of dismissive of it and i'll be like are you ri being ridiculous so this man uh, did the same thing well what i'm trying to say is uh, and what neville was trying to say is there is uh, no death to our real self and we are living countless lives in parallel realities and the reason why this is important to understand is because uh, Neville Goddard uh, talked about a lot of... First, let me explain what is a vision. Now, a lot of people say that Neville Goddard might have just been imagining this person. There is a difference between a vision and imagination. A vision is something that happens to you. It's not something you are feeling or you are imagining by your thoughts. It is a, a picture or an experience that is shown to you so Neville Goddard was in this world seeing this man and this man was talking to Neville Goddard and Neville Goddard was having a conversation with him like a dream in a dream you are not imagining a dream consciously right a dream is something that comes from your deeper self your higher self and is shown to you and that experience is I mean uh, have you been in a nightmare right how real it is like it's really trippy and sometimes we um, I died one time in my dream and the shock was so huge that I woke up and I felt the pain in, in in my heart and I was like for a for a few seconds I was really tripped out like did I really die so dreams is a perfect example of a vision it's not something you imagine so when Neville Goddard was talking about this man he was not a, uh, talking about imagination it was a vision and all, uh, every mystic from the past, spiritual deities, spiritual people, they had visions. They were shown things from their deeper selves. The answers were given to them. So uh, this is the difference between vision and imagination. So it was not imagination. He literally saw this man alive in another world, 20-something age, and uh, living his life the way he was living. So parallel realities are real from, literally real from Neville Goddard's uh, perspective. So what I was, I'm trying to say is why it is important to understand this. 
Neville Goddard talked about a lot saying that to desire a state is to have it. And I never really understood what is what does it mean to desire a state is to have it. What it means is you are promised the satisfaction of your desire, but might it might not be in this world. <laughs> there's there's the caveat. Because to desire a state is to have it. What is a desire? A desire is a hunger, a spiritual hunger. To set and to satisfy a hunger, you you imagine is fulfillment. For example, uh, somebody is ill; they are hungry for health, and sati to satisfy their uh, hunger, they must imagine health. And to the degree that they are able to imagine the perfect state of health they communicate to their higher self that I am aligned with this state of being. So their higher self shifts them to a parallel reality where their, uh, their hunger is satisfied. So to desire a state is to literally have it. Your every single desire will be satisfied, but it might not be satisf satisfied here uh, because of our failure to not really imagine and align with the end state. Now, uh, Florence Koval Shin said a lot that there is no loss in the divine mind and I really didn't understand this like I was like well we lose all the time right we lose money we lose relationships we lose people and when she said there is no loss in the divine mind it means that it might be lost in this world but it is not lost in other worlds it exists just like this man died in this world but he was alive in another world living the same life again now uh, and Neville Goddard said there is no loss in this world loss only occurs when we move in a state of consciousness where the life of this uh, thing is no longer natural in that state for example uh, there is no shortage or of wealth there is infinite amount of wealth in the world but a person who is really really fearful of losing his wealth he has moved into a state of being where the life of uh, his wealth is no longer natural because he's so fearful of losing it he is associated with the state of being where uh, he's a man who has lost his wealth you know consciously so the loss happens in his world but did he really lose his wealth no he lost his wealth in this timeline, in this parallel of reality. But in other realities, he stopped being fearful and he became more abundant. So your choices are what shifts you into reality. So, and Neville Goddard, knowing all these metaphysical things, uh, concluded his entire knowledge into one sentence. That is, go to the end and live there right go to the end why is it important because to shift reality to basically shift into another reality you have to get into a state where it is natural for you to have what you want mentally and god will shift you to that reality once you have satisfied the only condition that is required which is be uh, according to your faith be it done unto you Without faith, it is not please. It is not uh, possible to please Him. It, these are biblical verses. The novel God talked about a lot. Well, what is faith? Faith is not this religious concept that you must, you know. I don't want to get into it, but basically, faith is sticking to your decision of what you want to be, and then being it. That's faith. That's all there is to it. Persistence. And once you have demonstrated faith, it is in a, like you have satisfied uh, the condition to satiate your hunger, which is a fulfillment in consciousness. So as I have explained in previous videos that this is not the world of cause. The world of cause is consciousness. It's spiritual world that causes this world to appear. So once you have satisfied your hunger in consciousness, this world has to follow. Neville Goddard said this is the world of the dead, meaning this world is not what, where change is happening. Change is happening from the uh, consciousness and this is just a 
shadow of the real world of consciousness. So once you have satiated the hunger in the higher world, it is inevitable to come here. Or in, an, in another words, it is inevitable, inevitable for you to shift in the parallel reality where it is natural for you to have what you want. Natural. That's the world. So there is no loss in the divine mind. God is infinite and, and truly infinite being would contain every single possibility. Otherwise, it's not infinite. <laughs> right? So if God has created this world and these circumstances for you, there is another world where circumstances are a little bit different because your decisions were a little bit different and your state of being was a little bit different and then more and more parallel reality is infinite it goes to infinity there's a world where you're a billionaire for example but in this reality you are so far removed from that state of being a billionaire that it's it seems like a very big leap to get there so uh, I guess I won't advise for people to really, you know, go for shallow things. Like, don't set a number that, that I want to be wealthy in this one. Just assume that you are abundant, that all your needs are met. And live in this uh, state of being of ease, for example. Live in a beautiful house in your imagination. And do the things that you want to do in your imagination. And it will be done for you. Now, going back to the... God being infinite and every single thing existing here. How do we move there? This is where your decisions about this life are very important. Your state of being. What are you imagining? Because this is where how this world is being augmented, how everything comes into being is not our job. That's the job of the Most High. <laughs> that's the job of the the all in the book the Kabbalion in Hermeticism or uh, source in Abraham Hicks terms that's the job of source how everything is coming to existence but what is your job your job is to decide what you want which parallel reality you want to be in and this decision determines everything. For example, four years ago, if I decided not to go to Malaysia, uh, I lived there for four years, my life would have been completely different. I would not be in Russia right now. I would not be married to my wife. Uh, I would probably be on a very different career path. I would not be making these videos. I would not be making videos somebody's dog i don't know whose dog this is but yes i uh i will not be doing any of what i'm doing and this uh this explains to me that i shifted into parallel reality by choosing to be in malaysia so my life has been completely different but did uh, does another version of me exist who did not uh, decide to go to malaysia yes of course because in the infinity of God, there is no loss. So whatever you are deciding, the other decision was made by you as well <laughs> in another world. And so shifting realities is about decision making, first of all, and then going to the end, deciding what you want, going to the end and occupying it. And you will be shifted there. That's the most fastest way to shift reality. Because Neville Goddard understood that most people do not understand the deeper metaphysical truths about this life. They just want, they should be just be given a formula to apply and get what they want. Just like you don't need to understand how electricity works, how magnetism works. You just switch on electricity uh, button in your home and the bulb comes on. So it is not a prerequisite for you to know how everything works. but. Knowing how everything works is uh, it 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 makes your faith deeper in the law. So once you have chosen what you want, you have to uh, define it, define a scene where you are living in that desired reality. And to the degree that you can achieve naturalness in that desire, you will be shifted into a parallel reality where uh, you have what you want.
it is an odd odd concept to conceptualize because time is not real in the higher dimensions so all that you want and all your versions are existing right now but to kind of put it in a linear fashion whatever you desire will invariably be satisfied if not in this world in another world if not in another world in another world parallel realities are infinite so in one reality you have your sp and another reality you have another person that you ended up with and in one reality you are dirt poor and another reality you're extremely rich it, it it's infinite amounts exist and to the degree of your nationalness to attach to a new state of being and living there naturalness is important because naturalness implies that you have satiated the hunger uh, in your consciousness and it will manifest in this physical world or you will be moved to the natural world where you should be because you are a new in a new state of being so every single desire is invariably uh, satisfied it's just up to you what are you deciding in this reality what do you want are you being faithful to it and according to your faith be it done unto you so i guess this is what why i wanted to get deep into this trippy concept of parallel realities and shifting is real easy but you must demonstrate faith to satiate your hunger and it's a spiritual hunger to desire a state is to have it and desires will not end this is why <laughs> In Buddhism, uh, they say that uh, life is suffering or to desire a thing is, is suffering. Desire causes suffering so and desire. While it is true, but, but desire is life. God desired to be many things. This is why creation occurred. So to end desire is to get back to this infinite uh, state of nothingness, the void the all light or all love where you are just being and you are not desiring anything but ultimately you'll come down again into the loop of desire once again so parallel realities are real from Neville Goddard's perspective he literally experienced it and I have I haven't personally experienced it yet but I can tell you in dreams I have woken up a couple of times and I was able to control the dream and it was surreal experience to say the least that those worlds as, as worlds are as real and as this world and some people uh, some spiritual teachers as uh, go as far as saying that they are astral worlds who, which are literally real and our real self our soul is going on a journey when we sleep because when we are asleep the body is in rest mode so the soul can leave the body and go explore other worlds or our other parallel realities where we are experiencing different circumstances so in that way we all are experiencing parallel realities so but it's not imagination parallel realities and visions and dreams are not imagination because they are something that are happening to you they're coming from your deeper self and the characters have a, in your dreams have a life of their own so i don't know <laughs> if they're real or not but anyways uh i wanted to talk about this so until next time bro.